Antarctica is like no other place on the planet. It is unique. It's just this vast expanse of snow and ice and, and mountains and glaciers and ocean. It's uh, otherworldly. It's so separated from the rest of the world. Uh, and yet it is so important to the rest of the world. And I just love that combination of things, of that, of that pristine uh, uh, isolation and, and remoteness attached to its importance in the global, in the global system. It's the land mass and ice mass that surrounds the South Pole. It's as large as, uh, basically as large as North America. And it is uh, not the property or territory of any country. About 60 years ago, a lot of nations came together and said, hey, let's keep Antarctica as a place for scientific research, uh, as a place without a military on it, without any disputes between nations, and that's worked remarkably well. It's something called the Antarctic Treaty. And I think it's really one of the uh, most remarkable examples of international cooperation where people are coming together to study the planet, to share their knowledge, and, and to, to be good neighbors. Uh, we all help each other down there. What I do is I study the ice. Uh, so it is at the South Pole, it's cold year-round, uh, and so uh, the, the continent is just covered by this huge layer of uh, ice glaciers, what we call an ice sheet, something that just covers the entire continent. I'm a glaciologist, I study glaciers, that's my uh, area of specialization. And so the reason I go to Antarctica is to find out how big the glacier is, the, the ice sheet, the thing that covers the entire continent, uh, how thick it is, um, what its properties are, how fast the ice is flowing. What happens in Antarctica doesn't stay in Antarctica. It spreads all around the globe. Over the next 50 to 100 years, Antarctica is going, going to raise sea level around the globe, which is going to affect a lot of people in coastal areas. The two places that water is really lives on this globe is the oceans and Antarctica. The form of water in Antarctica is ice. So what happens is every year uh, water is transferred from the ocean to Antarctica in the form of snowfall, evaporation from the ocean and snowfall in Antarctica. And then Antarctica returns water to the ocean when these glaciers break up and, and melt and, and icebergs form. If that cycle is such that Antarctica is dumping more and more and more ice and water into the oceans, then the oceans start to rise. And they don't just rise right around Antarctica, they rise around the globe. So the Thwaites Glacier is a large, one of the largest glaciers in Antarctica. When we fly out there and the airplane lands in the middle of Thwaites Glacier and then the airplane takes off, uh, when you're standing there and you look all around 360 degrees, you don't see anything. It's, there's no trees, there's no houses, there's no roads, there's no cities. Uh, and the land has uh, some uh, undulations to it. There's some mountains in the distance, but there's no human footprint. And uh, all you see is just a big snow field that stretches out to infinity in all directions. Uh, and if the time of year is correct, there might not be a human being for 500 miles in, or 1,000 miles in any direction. So you are quite isolated out there. We're very particularly interested in it because a lot of our models and some of our observations seem to show that it's melting faster and faster and it's returning water faster and faster. And some of the models show that it has the uh, possibility of adding something like two feet of uh, about 60 centimeters, two feet of global sea level rise. And the question we have is, is that gonna happen over 
50 years or 500 years. And you have to remember, when I say two feet of sea level rise, that's around the globe. And that's an enormous amount of water out of this one glacier in Antarctica. And there's hundreds of glaciers in Antarctica. Uh, so understanding Thwaites will give us a handle on how worried we should be about uh, the potential for sea level rise in the next 50 years. Like most models, uh, we can sit there and say, well, there are changes in the system and they might have uh, slow, predictable uh, changes in the ice. Uh, on the flip side, you can also uh, have very rapid changes. Uh, the reason why we talk about Thwaites as a doomsday glacier is because of its uh, geometry, right? So it's sitting on uh, bed, it's thicker and thicker as you move inland. Uh, and so uh, dynamically what that implies is that the thicker you are the, uh, at the grounding line where you go from grounded ice to floating ice, the faster the outflux is. And so if you move that grounding line back, uh, you're going to end up uh, flushing ice out more readily to the ocean and changing sea level rapidly. Got it? Got it. Got it. Okay. That's the road. Woo. The reason why the term doomsday glacier is not one that I really like is that it implies there's nothing to be done. I think that is one of the most insidious and dangerous attitudes that we can have that we are doomed, uh, that there is no turning back, that there's nothing to be done. There are an enormous number of things that we can do, both as a society and to a lesser extent as individuals. Uh, I think the right way to do this is to approach this as a community, as a government, as a nation, and then the many nations around the globe. The human cause of climate change is from uh, CO2 emissions into the atmosphere. We burn gasoline in our cars, we burn diesel in our power plants, uh, all of that. The waste product from that is carbon dioxide. We produce about uh, a pound of carbon dioxide for every mile that we drive down the road. And I think that we are at a moment when uh, the transition from carbon dioxide based fossil fuel power systems to renewables like solar panels and wind is not just doable, it's actually the right thing to do. It's cheaper to put up solar panels and wind to produce energy than it is to build a new power plant. It's cleaner, it's gonna make more jobs for people, it's gonna really uh, transform our society, but we have to have the will and the energy and the vision to, uh, uh, to go down that road. We can and we must work together as a society to undo, to unwind uh, the, the, the effects that we have had on this globe uh, that, is, that is causing the warming. And I think we can do that. I think we have all the resources in place. The technology is there. The, the, the money is to be made. We can, people can make money off of this transition. Uh, all we need is the will.